The Polar Blue Parrot Cichlid is a relatively new hybrid in the hobby that has quickly becoming a popular species to see. I have been keeping them for over a year now, and by far they are the species I receive the most questions on. I wanted to put together a video going through the most common questions I have received. Also, be sure to stay until the end where I'll give an update on my polar parrots where there is both good and bad news. Now, if there is anything I don't cover that you have a question on, please ask it in the comments and I'll definitely respond. And if I get enough other questions that aren't in this video, I'll make a second part of this video. Anyways, I broke the questions into several sections by category. So first I want to start off with aggression and tank mates related questions. So the first question is, are they aggressive and can you keep them in a community tank? Now mine actually have ended up being pretty peaceful. They get along perfectly fine in the aquarium there now. And even prior to this, there was a few other species like yo-yo loaches and angelfish. And they've been totally peaceful, a little bit aggressive when they're younger, but they very much chilled out. They did, however, harass my mollies when I first got them. I put them in with mollies and they harassed them very much. In general though, I'd recommend they probably go in a tank with fish of a similar temperament, um, hardier fish, fish that are quick and can stand up for themselves. In general, they'll fit very well in with uh, medium sized cichlids that are semi-aggressive as well. Ones that aren't too aggressive, but ones that aren't too passive and not ones that are smaller than them, I would say. And then any bottom feeders that can hold their own, um, like clown loaches and yo-yo loaches, ones that get bigger. Um, I've kept them successfully with Corydoras, but um, some people have had problems with that because the Corys are smaller and they might feed up on them. But in general, um, any larger size bottom feeders that are more robust should be fine. And in general, it's just also gonna depend on the individuals in the individual polar powers that you have, as there are reports of aggressive ones, so you might get an aggressive one, or you might get more peaceful ones like mine, so it's definitely gonna be dependent on what you actually get. Next question is, what do I do if mine are chasing each other aggressively? So when I first got mine, this is actually something I saw. The one very much dominated the other one and was always chasing them around until the other one would go into hiding. Um, I also saw this with my, my blood parrots, so I think it's just a very common thing with cichlids, especially if you only get two of a species. So um, one option could be if you have enough room, you could get a third or more to split up the aggression. Also, just a big thing that will help is make sure you have enough caves and hiding spaces for all of them. Um, one, just a break line of sight. So I, when I had mine, once the one chased away, the other one would hide it and it wouldn't really be a problem, so no damage really done. But just want to make sure you have plenty of hiding spaces, plenty of caves, so each one can get their own territory. And then just either plants or other decorations of like line of sight will help a lot with this. Mine did as they got older and reached adulthood, they very much chilled out and became very peaceful with each other. So hopefully I'll be the same with yours. Although one definitely was clearly dominant over the other. Can you mix them with plants? So I successfully have, you'll see in the back, I have them with plants successfully right now. And I think you can, but the thing is you wanna make sure you're keeping hardy plants, kind of treat them as any other cichlid. They are smaller, but they are tough and they do like to dig. So I would say plants that you can attach to driftwood or rocks, such as Anubias or Java fern or mosses, they'll be great. Plants that are specifically like stem plants that have to go directly in the substrate and it's very important that their roots root into the substrate. They're probably not as ideal because I think they're likely to get uprooted. So I would just say hardier plants will be great and even like hiding in them, but um, be wary of any weaker or stem plants like that that are more fragile. How do my angelfish do with my polar parrots? So I used to keep two angelfish in with my polar parrots. I'd say they were, when I got my polar parrots that were about under an inch, my angelfish were, um, you know, not adults yet, but about uh, older than juveniles, about medium size. And my polar parrots initially were pretty aggressive towards them. They actually chased them all around. But um, as they got older, they totally chilled out. I don't have them in this tank anymore, uh, mainly just due to size constraints because I have my blood parrots getting gro growing, getting older, and my clown loaches as well. So I did move them into a different tank, but not for aggression or anything. The thing overall is that polar parrots can work with angelfish or they cannot. I've read and heard from other people who have had horror stories, that their 
people of Paris just beating up on their angelfish. Um, I also heard many people that said it was successful, like mine. So now the thing I would just say is be cautious with it. If you are going to try this combination, keep an eye on it. Make sure you have a large enough tank. You probably want at least 40 gallons if you're going to try this. Probably 55 is even better. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure no actual damage is being done. No real fins are being nipped. Just maybe chasing around. Be careful if the cichlids do pair up. Either if the angelfish pair up or the polar pair up. Is they'll get very aggressive. And that could definitely lead to aggression between two species. And actually bad things happening. If I were to try this combination again. What I would probably do is sort of what I did originally. Actually I think it worked out well. But I would do this. Is get your angelfish or have them. Um. They could either be adults or they could be medium sized and then get your polar parrots young. This way, even if the polar parrots are aggressive at least, they'll be much smaller than the angelfish so the angelfish will be able to take it. I think if you had very small juvenile angelfish, um, they would probably get pretty injured and beat up by the polar parrots. And then as the polar parrots grow up, they'll be with the angelfish and hopefully um, chill out with them. I've gotten questions if Polar parrots can be kept with larger fish. Some examples are Oscars, Arowana, and even giant Karamis. So what I'll say is temperament-wise, I think they're very good. They're very hardy fish, they're very fast fish, and they know how to hide as well. The big thing just to keep in mind pretty much with any combination is if the polar parrots can fit in the mouth of other fish, then you have to be worried because they could become food. Now, the polar parrots, they get to like three to four inches about, so they are pretty small, but um, they aren't super tiny. Um, you just wouldn't want to mix like baby polar parrots with some of the larger fish. Um, I would say Oscars could work. You just have to really, really careful once Oscar does reach full size because it's kind of right on the edge of it could fit in their mouth. Um, Arowana and giant garamis and even other monster fish, probably once they reach full size, I'd probably not recommend it because I think the polar parrots are small and become, could become food. So I probably wouldn't recommend that. Although while they're Younger though, some of those larger monster fish, um, it could be um, perfect tank mates while they're younger, but keep in mind that it won't, probably won't work when they're older. Jumping on to some questions on their appearance. Big one is how large do they get? Some of the common measurements thrown out are two inches, four inches, and even eight inches. And I think a lot of the confusion comes from a lot of the profiles online right now because they are such a new species are just copies of blood parrots. And now they do share a lot of things in common with blood parrots, such as temperament and water parameters. The one thing is they don't get nearly as large as them. Um, I've had mine for over a year and probably they got to their size they are now, probably about six months in, and they really haven't grown up in their tails, maybe getting slightly longer. And from um, talking to many other people who have kept them for years and years at reading on forms, that's pretty much the average they'll get to. You can expect them to be between three to four inches probably somewhere in between there. Um, for mine, the body size is probably two and a half inches to three inches, but then when you add on the tail, it gets closer to four inches. How do you get other colors in your polar parrots? Like I have one with a significant amount of red in the tail. So I think this is mostly just genetic. It, it really depends my, of my two adults. The one has a good amount of red and the other has mostly a darker tail. So it'll probably just depend on genetics. Now I do feed several foods that do enhance color. So that might definitely be something that helps. And I have also online seen ones that have yellow tails. They're actually sold as pineapple polar parrots. And then it's known that the females when breeding get more of an orange-ish yellow stomach. So I'd say it's more like genetics and based on the luck of which ones you get, which colors will show. Now, a somewhat related question because I mentioned food is just what food I feed my polar parrots. The main ones I feed them, the main ones they really like, are these Blood Red Parrot Plus, and they are known for color. Um, they're floating pellets, and they're pretty small. I think you can get them in a few sizes. I have the mini ones, and they are the perfect size for my polar parrots, and they love them. The next is I usually get a sinking skip pellet just to vary it up, and um, I just have an Omega 1 one right now. I wouldn't say the brand is too important. The other one is Vibrabytes, and I do actually know, and I just have the standard size, I do actually know they have smaller ones now. Uh, if you have small baby polar parrots, that might be better, but the normal size is great for them once they're adults. And then lastly, I just like to fill in blood worms, and I do like to do frozen ones, a treat of those a few times a week. And then also, um, cooked peas is a great little treat that they love to eat as well. 
what combination of species is this hybrid from? Now you'll read on a lot of sites that both have profiles for them and sell them. That they're a combination of convict cichlids and blood parrots. And this mainly comes from the fact that obviously they look like convicts for their color. Um, they kind of mirror them, just the body shape is different. But because they have the parrot-like beak and face, a lot of people say they come from blood parrots. Now, from reading more into this, and I actually did reference that that likely is where they come from in another video, but reading more into it, it's likely that that isn't the case. Um, people have read convicts and blood parrots before, and pictures of what they got don't look anything like polar parrots. And then, so I kind of read more into this, especially on forums. The unfortunate thing is there really is no good sources that have good cited sources um, to say exactly um, where they come from. It seems most commonly that they are a mix between Honduran red points, normal convicts, and then with one of them having a short body a gene deformity. And you'll see pictures of both of those species and the short body deformity. And um, it doesn't make a lot of sense how that's probably where they come from, some combination of all of those. It's not really known exactly how they were made, but that's probably more likely than convicts and blood parrots. Now with that, uh, I would have liked to find exactly where that came from. It definitely became sort of a rabbit hole to read different things. So I, I do want to dive into this more and uh, maybe make a full video on exactly where they come from, or at least what evidence is out there to point to where they came from. Next is how fast do they grow? So now they grow pretty quick in my opinion, except they end up pretty small. So they probably grow between a quarter inch to a half inch a month, but because they get so they don't get too big, that seems pretty quick. I'd say when you get them, if you get them at about an inch, that's when I got mine. Six months later, I'd expect them to be about full adult size. And I think just because of the body shape, they seem to grow very quick because it's very noticeable. Um, both the length and the height and just the features they develop, you'll know that from month to month that they definitely are evolving. So they feel a bit like they grow very fast in that regard. But I think as far as other fish I've had to go from pretty small to full size in six months is definitely quicker than any other species I've kept, despite they don't get that large. After six months or so, really the only thing is the whole, maybe their tail, the, my tail has gotten on mine um, almost like a fan tail-ish, like if you see long fin Oscars, their tail almost is starting to look like that. And then their neutral hump has continued to evolve after the six month point, but the actual size of the fish, length and height and width has not changed. How do you tell males apart from females? So I ended up with two males overall. At first, I actually thought one was a male, one was a female. Uh, a lot of people told me that was wrong, and then yeah, definitely after the reach don't hood, I saw that that was wrong. So overall, males tend to be larger, and they are known to have more color, a darker blue to them. And like one of mine, the tail can show a reddish tint. And if they do have a neutral hump, that definitely indicates that they are a male. The females are known to be more round, and when they are ready to breed, they will have a orangish, yellowish tint to their belly. I had a viewer on a previous video named Chris who mentioned that the female is smaller than the male, and the body of the female is more cichlid-like than the male. The parrot beak is a lot more obvious on the male, and so the females tend to look more similar to just a convict female, where the males are definitely more profoundly uh, parrot-like. And the last thing is if you do have both of each gender, they are known to just breed very easily. So as long as you have hiding spaces and good water parameters, they'll likely breed. So you'll know probably after a few months of having them if you do have one of each gender. And that does bring us to the next set of questions, which is breeding. So now I have not bred them. I had two males. I actually did get a younger one, another polar parrot recently, but still he's too young to know their gender. So I have not bred them, but um, I have read a lot on it just from being curious about the species, and especially since they're known for being such prolific breeders. So the first question is, how do you set up a breeding tank for them? So what I would do is set up a 20 gallon. You could do a 30 gallon as well. Obviously you could do larger, but I wouldn't do less than a 20 gallon, but I would say a 20 gallon would be more than plenty. I would put a mix of natural rocks, probably like I have in this tank for caves, just so they have natural hiding spaces but they also will breed and like to breed with a flat surface. So like a terracotta pot 
is great. You could also use like a PVC pipe that can swim in and out of, um, or like an epistogram of a spawning cave. Any of those should work and give them a good place to put their eggs and then also feel comfortable with having them in there with enough protection. They do like to dig in the gravel and sand, especially when breeding, so I'd recommend having gravel or sand, one of the two substrates. And then lastly, just for filtration, I would just have a low flow. So if you want the fry to survive a low flow so they don't get sucked up. So a sponge filter will be great. You can also do a hang on back filter that has an intake sponge to prevent them. Um, I'll put one in the description below of one I used for breeding mollies that I really liked. How often can you expect fry when breeding? From talking to others who have bred them successfully, they say that about once a month, every four weeks you can expect fry. Obviously it could take a little longer for some pairs, but that's generally what they've said. And they will say that they pretty much breed spot onto that. So unless you have a plan for what to do with the fry, you'll end up with a lot since they are very good parents and good at keeping them. Is it easy to sell fry? I pretty much see them at local fish stores, any ones I have always in stock. And because they breed so readily, I would say that it's probably, if it isn't already going to become a problem to sell the fry, I know there's plenty of online vendors selling them both on eBay and actual vendors. And I always see my local fish stores. And I'm sure because they breed so readily, the local fish stores have people asking them if they want to take them, even for free. So I'd say probably not. I'd say they're probably going to be one of the harder species to sell all your fry. I'm sure you can sell a few, but I think that just going to keep becoming more and more popular that it'll be harder and harder to sell the fry. I think there's just going to be an oversupply compared to demand. What gender combinations would I recommend? So obviously if you do want to breed, you're going to want male and female. But in general, if you're just picking them up at a store, if you can get either two males or two females or all of one gender, that'll be ideal just so you don't have to deal with the problem of them breeding if that's which, not what you want. Now, they are going to be very hard to identify the difference when they're young. And at most stores, I've seen them young. I think I've actually pretty much only seen them pretty young. So. That is one thing to keep in mind is you probably won't be able to tell until you have them for a few months. But I'd say if you can get the same gender, that's probably best. So you don't have to deal with breeding and separate them and having multiple tanks. And I've successfully kept two males, basically only aggression when they were younger. So I would say between the two, it doesn't really matter. I think the males will probably look cooler, but if there is any aggression, the females will probably be even more um, chill and peaceful. And just a few last questions, miscellaneous questions to wrap it up. So the first one is what are all the names they go by? They actually have a lot of names that you'll see in stores and online, just people talk about them because they are hybrid. People kind of come up with their own names. Now the most common is polar parrots or polar blue parrots, but there are some other very common ones like zebra parrots, jelly bean convicts, convict parrots, tiger parrots, short body convicts, short body Honduran red points, panda parrots, mini parrots, and then there also are platinum parrots, which are the same type of fish, but they are completely white. So you might see that as well. And you might see platinum mixed in with any of the other terms I just said. Where can you get polar parrots? So probably a year and a half ago, when I was looking at local fish stores, I didn't really ever see them. I saw them at one store for the first time. And then actually maybe a few months later, I saw them at a different store where they only had the two and those are the two I got. And then probably in the last six months or so around my area, I've seen them become very common in local fish stores and almost every local fish store I go to will have them in stock um, all the time now. Also, I've started to see them at some box stores, not PetSmart, but at Petco. I've seen them. That's actually where I got my one. They just had one cute little one in a tank. And so, and they seem super friendly. So I got them, but so they are becoming more popular and ending up at box stores now. And so, You'll also see them on eBay and online vendors sell them as well. So I'd say they weren't as common before, but now they're becoming very common. And if you can't find them locally, you should be able to get them online very easily. That wraps up all the questions I want to go through. As I said, if you have any others, please let me know. I did want to give a little update on my polar parrots. First, the good and exciting news is that about two months ago, I actually picked up another small polar parrot. They were just by themselves at Petco and they were looking very friendly coming up to the glass, so I ended up picking them up. I still don't know the gender yet, so we will see in a few months if they end up being male or female. The bad news though, is one of my polar parrots named Shifu, that was the one with the red in the tail, got an infection. 
He had a swollen lip that was possibly columnaris or another bacterial infection. After looking up the symptoms online, I decided to quarantine him and medicated him with Metroplex, but he did not make it many days after that and unfortunately passed away. But to close out, I want to thank everyone for watching. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like, consider subscribing to my channel as any support is very appreciated. Anyway, I'll catch everyone in the next video.